Ahead on this edition of SUTV News, new updates on Menard Hall and when it's expected to be completed. An interview with the student body presidential and vice presidential candidates steps away from the political agenda. And in sports, Bison Baseball struggles with weather conditions. The recent string of nice weather has pushed Menard construction on the North Edition into high gear. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. I'm Brandon Clark. And I'm Ryan Borsleman. Currently, workers are removing debris that fell and are excavating the hole for the base of the building. They will soon be placing rock with drain tile into that hole to help with the stability of the soil. A couple of new, uh, new updates to note, however, is that the North Edition will not have a basement. It will simply have a crawl space and it will also have air handling equipment. A target date of December 2012 has been set for completion. And the search for NDSU's next Dean of College Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences is heating up. A schedule for five finalists to visit was released on Monday and today the first arrived. Joe Sedisius, a professor of English and Spanish at Essex County College in New Jersey, took his first tour of campus this morning and later gave a public presentation in Beckwith Recital Hall on his goals for being chosen for the position. Sedisius will be here until April 2nd. The other four candidates will visit between April 4th and April 16th. NDSU students are celebrating diversity from around the world. The Office of International Programs, along with the International Student Association, is sponsoring NDSU's International Week. For more, here's SUTV's Dave Bain. <laughs> All week, the NDSU community explored other countries through a parade of nations, a photo essay contest, movies, and an international tea festival. You really get to meet people, so it's not like you're just going into the store and um, buying some tea from Zimbabwe, but you're actually interacting and they can tell you more about it and really represent their country and who they are. So Diego Pedes from Uruguay wants NDSU students to see what's special about his country's teas. Many countries in South America, but it's different in each country. So in Uruguay it's bitter and it's very hot and we drink it more socially. The tea festival is a way to share and compare other cultures. <laughs> you get to, oh, this is just the way we do it back home, and oh, this is very different. We do not use milk in our tea, so it's, it's fun to see all this. All in all, International Week means more to students from abroad than just sampling exotic teas. Um, means a lot to me because I get to meet a lot of people from different different countries, which is part of the reason why I came to study in the United States. Dave Bain, SUTV News. International Week is capped off by International Night, a variety show featuring songs, dances, and theater skits from around the globe. Well, the geeks were out in full force recently at a packed festival concert hall. The women of Alpha Gamma Delta hosted their annual Mr. NDSU with the theme Beauty and the Geek. A record 21 contestants representing fraternities and many other student organizations graced the stage in their best geek. The night included group lip syncing performances, a formal competition, interviews, and the crowning of this year's Mr. NDSU, Ken Story. Uh, there were tons of contestants out there ones that I expected to get through that didn't, so I was very shocked and humbled that I made it as far as I did when I reached the top three, but pleasantly surprised when I won. Ken represented the Interfraternity Council, which is the governing body for NDSU Greek men, and all proceeds from the event were donated to the FM Rape and Abuse Crisis Center. Well, coming up next on SUTV News, we're going to sit down with the candidates for the next student body president and vice president.
Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. Imagine the impact of a place where exploration leads to answers that touch everyone. Where resources and resourcefulness, teamwork and tenacity combine to open new frontiers. Where dreams take the lead and show you tomorrow. SUTV News is sponsored in part by Stop and Go. Stop and Go. We're always there. Welcome back, everyone. We are in the thick of campaigning for the next student body president and vice president here at NDSU. And while the candidates are busy trying to get votes, they took time to sit down with SUTV News as we got to know them by setting aside the politics. And while two of the parties were interviewed, however, the third, after being contacted, was not present. Alrighty, so to begin with, uh, we've all seen your websites and heard the debates and, and kind of gotten a feel for your guys' platforms, but can you just give me a, a 15 to 30 second summary of what your guys' platform is and, and for how you're going to um, use your time when you, when you are, um, if, when and if you are elected? So definitely. Uh, so with our platform, we've got five. And so uh, what five stands for to start with is, is vision uh, right away, and that's looking down the road to make NDSU a better university. Uh, switching over to I, and that's involvement. Uh, we want to get uh, organizations connected and involved and make sure that students are having the best involvement they can here at NDSU. Uh, bison pride, that's livening up our school spirit and the pride of being a bison. And then finally, uh, experience. We want to make sure that every student has the best experience that they possibly can. Okay. okay. And for you guys? We actually have a three-pillar platform. Our pillars are connecting, developing, and learning. And with connecting, our goal is really to connect students with opportunities, locate a sense of community both on our campus and across the country. Uh, developing is just developing the fantastic programs that NDSU already has, get more student involvement, make them bigger, make them better. But with learning, um, just really making sure that NDSU has a culture that supports and enhances everyone's education here. Great. All right, so now that we kind of got uh, the business side of things out of the way, let's dive into a little more of the personal side of you guys. Um, first of all, without stepping away from NDSU, what's your guys' favorite memory about NDSU thus far since coming to college through the election uh, process right now? Uh, this past fall, I had the opportunity to serve on homecoming court. That was a fantastic opportunity for me. Uh, I met so many new people, saw different sides of campus, uh, and really got really got into the festivities of homecoming week, and I absolutely loved it. Okay. Uh, for myself, I had the opportunity to actually travel to Montana when the Bison got to go play football at Montana State. It was really just an incredible experience. We flew out there for one day, watched the game, had all the alumni relations, things like that, and then got to fly back that night. It was really just an incredible experience full of Bison pride with everyone there. Very exciting. I'd say my, my favorite memory is just going back to freshman year on the very first week, uh, moving in. There's so much unknown of, of what's going on. I know there was a dance happening and a bunch of friends went over and I got to experience that. And then the very first football game, uh, I can still look back and remember the goosebumps I got when the, when the team came out of the tunnel. And so uh, looking back at that, that whole first week, that whole first experience was awesome. Great. Um, mine, mine would have to be Collegiate DECA, where I competed at a state level, and uh, our, our chapter is very, very good here at, uh, at NDSU. We, uh, we show a lot of eyes and pride, and then uh, also my first football game. I just got here this year, and um, my first football game was incredible. It was a ton of fun. It's, uh, it's, it's very different being in the stadium of, of 4,000 students and, and being involved in it. So. Great. Thank you, candidates. Um, so. Coming to NDSU, you guys have had very good moments and, and times you remember, but I'm guessing there's been some moments that you kind of would like to leave in the past, some embarrassing times. So what is your guys' most embarrassing moment here since you've come to NDSU? <laughs> I've got to think. <laughs> i got to think. I don't know. I look back at high school days. There's some definite embarrassing moments there. Or, um, or high school or, or your most embarrassing yeah, moment. Does anyone have some right away? i, I got to think here. Happy it's in the debate because then I gotta come up. But I'm hearing some right away. This is this camera rolling, so we can think about it for a sec. Anyone has to jump in? I gotta think. You asked a harder question. Yeah, I've heard before. Yeah, you're the policy. It's good. There's not a third debate coming up. 
and the one thing I was always scared of, this never happened, but just in the dining center, uh, when I got in as a freshman, they took the trays away, and so uh, yeah. carrying your cereal, carrying your milk, all that stuff with you, I was very careful. Uh, there was a few times I came very close to, to dropping something, but uh, I can look back, I can say I successfully uh, was able to carry my food all through freshman year up to this point. So, uh, But that was a fear. Uh, who knows? I, I should knock on what it could happen. That's something when I go eat there, and everything's going to come uh, crashing down. So until that day, that'll be the most embarrassing moment. I know what that's like. I actually was one of, I didn't drop a whole plate of food, but I, I dropped a dessert one time. And, <laughs> yeah. and then the, the initial reaction is to look around and see if anybody yeah, was watching. Right, right. And, we'll play it off. This is freshman year. First college dating experience, right? I'm on this first date with this girl. Good, good night, things are going well. We get out and we're sitting by the, that kind of stone quarter by the Battling Book Bridge, all that area, whatever. Looking up at the stars, whatever. <laughs> I'm a little freshman guy here. Ask if I can hold her hand. <laughs> Denied. You know, it's like the worst thing any guy wants to hear. It's like, oh. But things have improved since then. So. <laughs> So now, being a part of NDSU, we obviously know that athletics is a huge part of the culture, basketball games, football games, everything. Do you guys have a favorite sports team, uh, professional or not, that you guys cheer for outside of NDSU? I am, I am actually a huge Vikings fan, and so Sundays, whether I'm going to have a positive Sunday or a negative one, it all sometimes <laughs> comes down to how the Vikings do it. So. Just, I, just looking back, I've always, always followed the Vikings, so I'm uh, pretty passionate to take my purple out. And I know one year when it works out for me, because it hasn't yet, but one year when it works out and they actually do well, um, that's going to be a very, very good year. Um, it's going to carry, I think, the rest of my life. So hopefully next year, I'm calling it, the Vikings are going to take it all. So. If there is football. If they, yeah, maybe, yeah, okay. We'll, the next, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. So, next time we have football. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, my sister and I both are. She's a little bit more diehard than I am. But whenever I talk to her on the phone, she gives me all these stats. Then I get a texting quiz later that day to see <laughs> if I remembered. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank you all for sitting down with us here and answering a few questions, kind of getting to know you on a personal level, aside from all the political stuff. And we wish you the best of luck in all of the, uh, uh, all of the elections and everything that's upcoming. Now you can vote for your favorite candidates from April 5th through the 6th. Well, when we return, one, NDSU, one of NDSU's own is inducted into the Hall of Fame. We'll have this and more when we come back. Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. Imagine the impact of a place where exploration leads to answers that touch everyone. Where resources and resourcefulness, teamwork and tenacity combine to open new frontiers. Where dreams Take the lead and show you tomorrow. Well, welcome back to SUTV News. A Hall of Fame induction is what awaits one communication professor at NDSU. 
Judy C. Pearson, Professor of Communication and Associate Dean of the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, will receive this honor when she's inducted into the Central States Communication Associate Hall of Fame at this association's meeting in April. To achieve this, a member must achieve the highest level of service to an organization, an honor Pearson says she is surprised to receive. Is the kind of the final award, or the, the you know the kind of thing that people get in the end of their careers, and I think none of us think that we're at the end of our careers. So it was surprising, you know, that I, I was receiving that. Pearson served as the association's president and went on to become president of the National Communication Association as well as the president of the World Communication Association. And an achievement has also been handed down to two NDSU researchers. Samim Alam, graduate student in the Department of Coatings and Polymeric Materials, and Brett Chisholm, senior research scientist at the Center for Nanoscale Science and Engineering, received a prestigious Rune Award at the 2011 Coatings Tech Conference. They received first place for their technical paper they submitted. The awards are considered one of the coding industry's highest technical achievements. And a communication professor has added a book to a series about American history. Dr. Ross Collins recently published Children, War, and Propaganda. In it, Collins explains how modern U.S. propaganda influenced the activities of children during World War I and World War II. The series of books that was added to includes a diverse range of works dealing with the mass media and its relationship to society. Speaking of wars, two NDSU colleges have immersed themselves in one. Ambassadors from the College of Pharmacy, Nursing, and Allied Sciences and the College of Engineering and Architecture recently faced off in a penny war they call the Battle of the Census. The battle is in large part a way for students from both colleges to meet and share in a friendly competition. Uh, it's important to, to not get too comfortable and stay within your, your four same walls every day and to branch out. and and meet some other people, learn about other groups, and, and find out where you can help out. I think it's a really great thing to raise money for both the organizations that we're raising money for, Habitat for Humanity and Dakota Medical Foundation. It's nice to be involved in something outside of yourself and bigger than yourself that benefits the whole community. The fundraiser benefits Habitat for Humanity and the Dakota Medical Foundation. Well, speaking of wars, there's another war going on here in Fargo, the battle of Mother Nature versus outdoor sports. And unfortunately, Mother Nature has the upper hand in this one. She seems to be dumping a lot on us lately. <laughs> yeah, Fo uh, softball and baseball are both having struggles. This and more when we come back with SU TV Sports. Jimmy John's, America's favorite sandwich. Delivery guys. Imagine the impact of a place where exploration leads to answers that touch everyone. Where resources and resourcefulness, teamwork and tenacity combine to open new frontiers. Where dreams take the lead and show you tomorrow. SUTV Sports is sponsored in part by Shields.
Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields, the world's largest selection of sports, sportswear, and footwear. Welcome back. Bison football fans definitely haven't forgotten it, but NDSU's heartbreaking overtime loss to Eastern Washington in the FCS quarterfinals last December is now a distant memory, and the team is already gearing up for the 2011 season. As the snow continues to melt and the temperatures slowly climb, the Bison will head outdoors to Dakota Field for practice beginning April 4th. After working off the winter rust, players will meet for the annual Green and Gold Spring Game at 1 p.m. on Saturday, April 30th at the Fargo Dome. Among returning starters for the Bison are senior running back DJ McNorton and wide receiver Warren Holloway. McNorton is coming off of a career season in which he piled up over 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns, while Holloway led the team in receiving with nearly 700 yards and five touchdowns. The Bison are also expecting some competition for the QB position with Brock Jensen, Jose Moeller, and possibly recruit Carson Wentz battling for the starting job. NDSU will begin the 2011 season with two straight home games before traveling to TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis for a showdown with the Minnesota Golden Gophers on September 24th. 18 games into their season, the Bison baseball team has yet to play a home game. Due to recent weather conditions, it may be a while before they are back on their home field. SUTV Sports Director Ryan Nelson has more. With the snow piled high, the Bison baseball team has had to find new places to play. I think it's a big bonus for us getting out here instead of just being inside the whole time. Obviously we'll get our hacks inside, but I think at least coming out here, getting some fly balls, ground balls in the conditions is good for us. The home of the Bison Newman Outdoor Field is still nearly covered in snow with water making the rest a mess. And this has been frustrating for the team. You know, it, it, it is what it is and mentally we have to get through it. It's hard to get into a rhythm, but uh, we're not going to use that as an excuse, that's for sure. A lot of the teams in our area are going through the same problems. They want to get outside and play home games, but you know, the weather's not cooperating right now. With a 2-16 and 16 start, they have had a chance to regroup with only one game since March 18th. This is a big thing we've been talking about lately is, you know, starting a second season where, you, you know, we've had some tough luck, you know, some one-run games, put that behind us and just start over. Because really, I mean, all that matters is coming down to conference. I think that's what we're aiming for right now. Currently practicing in the confines of the BSA and on Dakota Field, they are taking their limited time outside very seriously. And one of the reasons why we don't practice for four straight hours is we try to come out here for short increments. That way we keep the concentration up to a high level and then get our work in and get out. It's very game-like when we start playing at home and maybe just like this with windy and overcast and cold. So we need to make it as, as uh, game-like as we possibly can. Although the North Dakota winter has been frustrating, the Bison aren't letting this get them down. You know, for a team that's 2-16, and 16, I think this is the most confidence that we've had. Uh, we've competed a lot. We're just losing a lot of the close games by one, and you know, I think one of these games is just going to click, and it's going to start going our way. I'm Ryan Nelson reporting for SU TV Sports. The Bison were scheduled for games with Concordia and UND this weekend, but they have been postponed. They will play Southern Utah this week. After waiting nearly two months to finally play at home in Fargo, the Bison softball team will have to wait just a bit longer. The team was originally scheduled to play Summit League opponent IUPUI at home this Friday, but the soggy, snow-covered NDSU softball complex had different plans. Because of the poor field conditions, the series will instead be played at the University of Nebraska Omaha. Because, the move, because of the move, NDSU won't get a chance to play in front of its home crowd until April 22nd when rival South Dakota State comes to town. While the Final Four begins on Saturday with two big conference schools and two Cinderella stories, this year certainly has been one to remember. 11th seeded VCU will take on 8th seeded Butler, followed by 3rd seeded University of Connecticut taking on 4th seeded Kentucky. The winners will meet in the championship game on Monday at 8 o'clock p.m. Here is a look at how our sports department sees the Final Four shaping out. Well, it's definitely been a bracket buster. Obviously, there's a, there's a lot of 
toss-up as to who they think is going to win it, who you guys think is going to win it. Yeah, it's, it's a toss-up right now. Like you said, nobody knows who's going to pull through. Well, I'm uh, going for VCU, keeping that hot streak going right now. Well, well, either way, we do know a Cinderella team will make it into the final and hopefully win as well. That is a plus, definitely. Whether or not Kentucky can take care of business, that's all. All righty. Well, coming up next on SUTV News, students take advantage of a snow-filled winter. We'll have this and more when we return. Technology has given birth to many innovative products in order to improve efficiency and product quality, but also to have fun. Today we'd like to show you an amazing new piece of technology, the Xbox Connect by Microsoft. It's capable of gauging distance and motion, digitally map a 3D space, and even visually recognize players and accepting voice commands, doing it all in real time. So let's talk tech. Connect is totally different from all other gaming devices that have been launched in the past few years without any gizmos or gadgets to hold. When playing with Connect, you are the controller. Using revolutionary PrimeSense technology, Connect creates a depth image of the players with incredible accuracy, capable of sensing and tracking the entire human body without any special hardware. The Connect sensors are able to track at least six people simultaneously, including two active players. Just have your friend jump in and Connect automatically adds another player. In addition to its stunning motion technology, Connect also features a voice recognition system. The multi-array microphone setup can recognize spoken words and commands. Combining this with Connect's motion tracking capabilities gives you nearly complete hands-free control of your Xbox. So get off the couch, ditch the cumbersome controls, and experience the magic of Connect. Welcome back to SUTV News. For some NDSU students, winter can drag on and on as foot upon foot of snow piles up on campus and temperatures hang below freezing. But for others, all the snow and cold provides a unique opportunity. SUTV's Matthew Kurtz went underground for the story. We, we, we take our snow very seriously. When it comes to the fluffy stuff that falls from the sky, don't mess with Andrew Dieter and his buddies. I knew Andrew was ambitious. This is... This is a little bit more than a hobby, slightly more than a hobby. This winter, Andrew and some other NDSU freshmen have been going like gophers to create an impressive underground world. Complete the fort from start to finish. Took about two months. We started right here by digging a hole down the ground, about eight foot all the way down to the, to the ground. And just three trash cans and a few mini shovels later, the guys had begun construction of what they affectionately call PD's Palace. So the first room here, you can see it, it wraps around this main central pillar and then we have a have a team that would that would relay the snow up and out of the fort. We think we, we moved about 10,000, 15,000 pounds of snow. Want an economical way to light an underground fort? Well these guys have the answer. Almost exclusively we use candles because they work best. Well if, if you if you notice once in a while you see a, a slot in wall and what we did is we just we just went uptown and bought some candles and uh, we, we would just stick them in the wall. That's, that's how we lit up our world down here. Andrew may be a geology major, but for him and engineer Greg, snow fort construction is a science. We have limitations with how big of a uh, singular open space you can have. We, we used a couple different pillars and, and uh, in that way you can make uh, a bigger room. In a few weeks, the fort will likely be gone, but all that the guys gained from it will last much longer. We share an enthusiasm for snow. It's been a great time to get to know Andrew and Kyle and the other guys that have worked here. They have a really good work ethic. Ooh, it's hard. I got a lot of sentimental value in this fort, you know. I mean, it's going to go sometime eventually, but it, it was fun. I mean, half the fun was building the fort. All good things must come to an end. I'm Matthew Kurtz reporting for SU TV News. Because of the rise in spring temperatures, the guys have now officially retired Petey's place for the season, but they did not rule out making an even bigger and better snow fort next year. Well, that's all the time we have. Thanks for joining us. Don't, to pick up, don't forget to pick up your copy of The Spectrum and check us out at ndsubin.com.